Hi, it's Doug. I recently came across this unbelievable video. It was taken at a hotel in Texas, where on the roof of the hotel, they have this pool that hangs off the edge, and it has a glass bottom. Look at this. Would you go in there? Would you trust this glass? No. Someone named Benjamin has a question about glass. Let's give him a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Benjamin. I have a question for you. How's the glass made? That's a great question. It's funny, right? Think about just how many objects around you are made of glass. Without glass, we'd have no windows, no windshields for our cars, no drinking glasses or eyeglasses, no skyscrapers or smartphones. And yet, it's really not obvious at all where glass comes from. Like, if you're sitting there and you have a table or a desk in front of you like this, that's wood. I'm guessing you know that wood comes from a tree. Or this statue here is carved from stone. You know where that comes from. But glass? Glass is a material that has to be made. How do they make it? Where does it come from? Let's discuss. How do you think glass is made? Well, believe it or not, glass is made by taking a bunch of sand and getting it so hot that it melts. It's one of the most amazing things to watch how it's made. Because in order to melt sand, you have to use a special type of oven that can get super hot. It's called a furnace or a kiln. Here, you can see someone loading some sand into the furnace. Once it gets hot enough, it will melt or become liquid. And when you get something this hot, you can see it glows, just like lava. This isn't lava, though. It's molten sand. And as it cools, it will start to look more familiar to you. It becomes solid glass. To make a flat sheet of glass, like you'd use for a window, they melt sand until it's molten. Then they pour it out and roll it into a flat shape like this and carefully allow it to cool. More fancy objects, like a glass vase, are even more fun to watch. This involves a special skill called glass blowing. You can see here, it starts with this person taking a big glob of molten sand and getting it on the end of a hollow pipe. Then she blows air into the pipe. You can actually blow a bubble into it, which might end up being the open part of the vase. The molten glass has a similar thickness as honey. They carefully shape it the way they want it and keep turning it and turning it. As it cools, it becomes solid. Artists can make amazing sculptures with glass. Believe it or not, this artist is making a glass swan. So that's how glass is made. But it's kind of weird, isn't it? I mean, how did people ever discover that if you melt sand, it makes glass? We've been making glass for a long time. So long ago now that no one knows for sure who was the first person to discover that if you melt sand, it makes glass. But some of the earliest objects made of glass come from ancient Egypt, a place covered in desert sand. Could it be that someone long ago had a campfire and noticed that the heat of their fire melted the sand beneath it? No one knows for sure, but it's possible. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Benjamin, for asking it. The world is filled with incredible wonders. Before you vote on next week's question, we put together some surprising things about heat that I'd love to show you. Take a look inside, or if you don't have time, you can skip straight to voting. Ooh, let's open. Mystery Doug's top five surprising things about heat. Number five. Whoa, these things melted just from being in the sun. How hot do you think it was when they melted? Wow, look at that. That's a stoplight that melted in a garbage can? No way. These pictures were taken when the outside temperature got up to 120 degrees. That's very hot, isn't it, friends? Oh, my word. Number four. 
it got so hot in this car, guy's car that he was able to cook breakfast. How else could you cook food without fire? Hmm, that's a good question. Look, he's cooking, what is he cooking? A bacon, two pieces of bacon and an egg inside his car. Don't try that at home. These people are using the heat from lava to cook steak and hot dogs. Looks like it works well. Oh my word. That's lava heat. Look at their steak they're putting on the grill. And they're going to cook those and they're going to cook hot dogs. Ooh, it's crazy, isn't it? Wow, they're cooking well. Look at that. Number three. Something strange is going on here. What do you think is happening to all this mud? What could it be? Look at it boiling up from the ground. This mud is boiling. Lava is so hot that even if it's deep underground, it can still boil the mud on the surface. So there's lava underground boiling up. Number two. Check out these geysers. What do you think is causing the water to shoot out like that? This must be in Yellowstone because in Yellowstone National Park we have geysers. That is, it looks like Old Faithful in Yellowstone. I've never been before. I need to go. What's causing the water to shoot out? Could it be heat? <gasps> Underground lava boils water and makes steam. When the pressure is too much, the water erupts like a volcano. That's slow motion. Look at that, guys. Isn't that crazy? Water boiling out. And now, the last one. Here's one last surprising thing about heat. What do you think will happen once the candles are lit? Ooh, let's watch and see. Heat can make things move. The heat from the fire pushes air up and makes the paper spin. Only try this with an adult. So they light the candles, the heat goes up because it pushes the air and it made the candle spin. Hot air balloons work the same way. Fire heats up the air inside the balloon, so you have the fire and the heat rises from the fire. 